graduates here. As always, that's how we will start this video off. So, uh, you guys have fun? We'll go to class? Yes. A little different than what you'd expect? Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Very well, we can't talk about what happened. Pleasantly surprised. This is like Las Vegas. What happens in this classroom stays in this classroom. Yeah. Yeah. You better not. I'm going to tell her everything. I'm going to tell her everything. Now, before we get in and out the awards, just uh, let me get my little spiel out of the way. What I want to talk about is a couple of things. First things first, extractors. All right. Those of you who know us and you guys got a chance to meet Jesse, all right, big Jesse Morgan guy, right? He came out with this product called the extractor tool. Now, for the extractor, what it does is it's a life-saving tool, and it will cut seat belts and break windows. Now, man, that's done before and all this other stuff. Let me expand on it just a little bit. Jesse's device mounts directly to your visor. During a motor vehicle crash, and especially in rollover events, everything that you have inside your center console, glove box, door jams, it's, if it's not laying outside the vehicle because of the rollover, it's somewhere else. It's definitely not going to be where it's supposed to be, where you last put it at. This device mounts securely directly to that visor. So rollovers and impacts, it's not going anywhere the way that it's designed. It's also made with surgical steel um, for the cutting surface, for the cutting blade. It has slice and dice through a seat belt. I think we got... I think we've done it like 75, somewhere between 75 and 100 times so far with the same blade, and it's still slicing and dicing right now. Um, so it doesn't wear out as quickly. Also, the puncturing surface for the window punch is a tungsten carbide tip. Steel, I carry a rescue knife on me because you know, extractors come out soon, but the steel bounces off of the window glass. So when you go in and you go to hit that, a lot of times, you wind up doing it and you're bouncing a couple of times until you finally get that good penetrating blow because it bounces back. The steel bounces, whereas the tungsten does a minute vibration and will smack and shatter that glass right away. The only thing better than that, and we're thinking about doing this, is using ceramics. Ceramics are just thrown into the side of the glass and busted out. Um, anyway, so the extractor tool, we need to get some funding to get it launched off the ground. One Million Cups, we, um, we did an interview with them before and kind of did a presentation. They loved it. It was excellent, one of the best that they've had um, in a while. So they've invited us back for an opportunity to win $25,000. That $25,000 right there would get the first production run made. Injection molding completely done and everything sent over here and you're rock and rolling. You'll see it in places like Advanced Auto Part, Ace Hardware, Sears, Sears Automotive. We've worked with a lot of these places before locally. We're also going to expand it to internet sales, mass production for wholesale, retail, the whole nine yards. So with your help, if you wouldn't mind, check us out on Facebook, The Extractor Tool, all right? And give us a vote. Give us a like. Give us a vote. And you can vote multiple times in a day. I think the uh, refresh rate's like four, two to four hours, something like that, right? Four? Quicker than that. Oh, wow, even better. Nice. So we can really get some turnover with that. Just help us out. That's all we ask, please. Um, right now we're doing pretty good. We were uh, up in 10th. All right, so help us out. Now, that pretty much ends it for the extractor tool for us. What I'd really like to talk about is in the class, we have two tests. We have a 100-question exam, the first part, 24-hour, and then the second part, the 16-hour, 70-question exam. Everybody's like, oh my God, 170 questions. <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, I want to show this class is sweet. Nobody got worse. Everybody got a B or better. I mean, and first of all, in my opinion, I don't give a crap what your score is as long as you absorb this material properly. I mean, 75% is what you need as a passing grade. All right, so 100 questions, it's, uh, you can miss 25. And out of the 70 questions, you can miss 15. All right? I don't want to put anybody on the spot, so I've covered everybody's names up. And this is a mishmash between 75, or I'm sorry, the 70 question and the 100 question exam. All right? And as you can tell also in the back, people get hundreds too. It's not that hard. 
I don't want anybody to worry about a test. The only thing that I take the most serious aspect of the, um, of the 70 question exam, the last exam that you do on Sunday, is the use of deadly force. Question number 17 on the 70 question exam, and I'll be completely honest with you, on the second page of the 70 question exam, question number two, I believe it's under fundamentals if I'm not mistaken, tells you the answer to question number 17. The use of deadly force is never authorized unless a person or persons poses the means, motive, and ability to cause you and the persons around you the imminent fear of death or great bodily harm. All force options have been exhausted and the possibility of a safe retreat is not feasible. At that time, you'd be, able to, you'd be authorized to use deadly force. It's a true false statement. Question number two. Question number 17 is the only time that I want you to think outside, you know, think for yourself. I would like to know when you feel that you would be justified in taking another human being's life. Because before you leave this class, I teach you the use of force response to resistance matrix. So you understand what force levels you're allowed to respond with. Right, we're allowed to respond with force that is equal to or slightly uh, greater than the suspect to gain control. And once you've got the suspect compliant, it becomes your best friend. You do not want a civil rights violation. I tell you right now, that is a uh, federal crime. You mess with somebody's constitutional rights, civil rights, you don't want to play that game. And right, so that's the only question that's really technically difficult. Because you have to think for yourself. Oh, God help us. we got to think for ourselves. What am I going to do? Nut up or shut up. Time to get that stuff going, right? So, everybody graduated. And uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and award the certificates. And one more time, I'm going to give you myself a round of applause. For you. All right. And you may hear rumors about me. Um, <laughs> they're not true. All of which are true. Okay, I'm not a dick. I just want to prove that I brought donuts for the class this morning. Okay, so I'm not that mean. A little bit, but not that much. It's like my buddy Phil likes to say, three things. Show up on time, don't fall asleep, and don't be a dick. So I can't be a dick. All right. Mr. Thomas. On Saturday, sir. Can you get your certificate? Woo! Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, all right. And we'll talk about going on here late, later on, too, all right? Thank you, thank you. Joseph. Sherbet. Oh, I like sherbet. Sherbet? Yeah. Oh, that sounds like like a dessert. Sherbet. Sherbet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you for your services. Thank you for coming. <laughs> no. Not even real. That's not even real. What? Nicole, bring it, please. Somebody's coming back from lunch. Uh, hey, Cassandra, come on up. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. From New York here. I, I haven't even called her by her name all week. It's been New York. No, nope, you know. That's, I'm fine so, with that. Um, like I said on Thursday, just to recap a couple of things, um, your opinions. Obviously, they're what makes you an individual. I talked about that a little bit today. All right. Everybody is unique in their own way. Be proud of yourself. Take pride in who you are as part of being a professional. When you're working in this field, in the public safety field, okay, and the atrocities that everybody claims are going on in these days, 
hold your judgment, reserve judgment, until all the facts have been presented in the case. Okay? It's very easy to act on emotion. We're seeing it in Charlotte. All right? it, that's a reaction, an emotional reaction. And you're taught in here that what you're supposed to do is while everybody else is responding emotionally, you are to respond tactfully. Tactfully. All right? So hold your judgment. Hold back on that until all the facts present themselves. All right? In Charlotte, what they're saying is that the suspect was unarmed and he was reading a book and all this other stuff. It has been proven wrong. Even the person that said, like, oh my God, there's plenty of evidence on this, recanted his statement. They were dropping their black nitrile gloves on the ground. So please, reserve judgment until the facts come out. And understand why officers use force and the type of force that they use. That's what I teach you in here, to understand what justifiable use of force is, because the only force option that's allowed to be used on the streets anyway is justified. You always use force, and we talked about that as well. Your presence alone is a response to any level of resistance. And just imagine, you know, the big SWAT guy or the law enforcement officer with the big duty belt on and, you know, all that... Batman utility gear going on, guns all on, baton, pepper spray, tasers, handcuffs. You know, it can be intimidating to some people. And if it's intimidating, it's a use of force, which is a good thing in some And sometimes it's a good, good thing. It will de-escalate situations because you're like, yeah, I really don't feel like getting tased today. So you have a good one, I'll be good. And that usually fixes some situations. Your verbals. Giving a verbal directive to someone is a use of force. All right, a verbal directive with proper dialogue can either escalate or de-escalate a situation. So it's use of force. You must use proper use of force, and it must always be justified. And like I said before, the options of use of force, we are allowed to respond with force that is equal to or slightly greater than force applied, level of resistance. Absolutely. All right? Facebook out there, you guys in here. You know somebody looking to take, uh, looking for a career change, wanting to do something a little different, maybe has that desire to help the community out, because even though we're security, we do hold a public service. It's my opinion that if you're doing this, you care for somebody else. You have enough compassion to take care of someone else and think for someone else outside of yourself. That's what part of being public safety is. You're a public servant. You know, yes, we're not sworn law enforcement officers. We don't, we're not bound by a duty to act. But I haven't met a single person in this field that's worked with me side by side and as a partner that has not um, willingly sacrificed time and, you know, their safety at times and a strong mentality to do so. So it's always do the right thing. Facebook, class, if you know anybody who wants to be that way, send them my way for a, Monday, or a Thursday through Sunday class. If you want to do a weekend class, it's 165, and it's online. If you show up in person, it's 150 or 175 for the two, respectively. Use a credit or debit card for the um, weekday course, the Thursday through Sunday. It's like 156, and I can't remember the math off the top of my head for the 175, but I think it's like uh, 4%. Either way, come see us. Check us out online, psifortmyers.com. Check us out on Facebook. Obviously, you might already be there, but if you're looking at us at YouTube, at our Professional Security Institute YouTube channel, switch over to Facebook. Check us out on there. Give us a couple of likes. All right. I want to be Facebook famous, so share me. All right. And I'll do something crazy to do it, you know? What can I do? Can I jump off the top of the building? Is that cool? Do some jackass style stuff? Oh, yeah. Or maybe we'll get hit with a taser. Do that again. That's Pepper spray. Something fun. We'll do something. I'm not going to test my bulletproof vest, so you can take that <laughs> shit out of there. All right. Um, so check us out on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube, Professional Security Institute. If you like your Second Amendment as much as I do, God knows I'm a gun nut, check out our sister store over here, the Tactical Weapons and the Gun Negotiator. Um, you can give us all a call. Um, my number here for the school, 239-936-7044. Send me a fax. I don't care. 239-936-9957.
Email address, well, PSI Fort Myers at gmail.com. Very simple with that. Check us out on the web, PSIFortMyers.com. And as always, Facebook, you guys out here, stay informed. Break time. <laughs>